Okay, I think this is going to be a quick one. I'm going to talk about slope a little bit. Now, you learned a lot about slope um, probably last year in algebra. Uh, slope has to do with um, the angle, sort of, the steepness that a line is sitting at on the coordinate plane. And um, the amount that it's sort of decreasing or the amount that it's increasing, we give a number for that, and that number is called slope. Uh, on this sketchpad document, I've got this... Um, line set up here and sketchpad will measure the slope for me and it's telling me that the, the slope as it measures it the slope for this line is 0.63 now where does that come from well uh, you may remember that slope is defined as rise divided by run here i've uh, measured i've got two points sitting on the line here point c and point e point c uh, i've dropped a vertical line straight down to measure the rise between point C, the level of point C, sort of in the level of point E. This rise from C to E, I have down here to D, uh, is right now at 2.51. The run between C and E, sort of the, the X level of E and the X level of C left to right, the east-west distance between C and, I'm sorry, yeah, between C and E is 3.96. And right now then that fraction of rise divided by run, I have measuring down here. Rise divided by run right now is 0.63, and guess what? That's the same thing Sketchpad said as, as the slope. Um, and we're just going to mess around here with different slopes of different lines. I'm going to get that out of the way. Okay, so uh, right now, yeah, this rise divided by this run is 0.63. So about, if you like to think in percentages, this little segment, CD, is about 63% of ED. Does that sound familiar? That's kind of like what we were just talking about with tangent. We're talking about the percentage of this, uh, you know, what percentage this is of this. It's kind of like opposite over adjacent. It's kind of like um, how much is this of that. That's that's kind of what we'd think of as tangent of this angle. That's kind of why we're doing these at the same time. It's almost like tangent of this angle you can think of as the slope of BC. Uh, first of all, I just want to show you that it doesn't matter which two points we pick on the line. I pick these two points are kind of close together. I've got a really smaller number for CD, much smaller number here for ED. But when you divide them still, it's still 0.63. This is still 63% of ED, and I could make them really far apart, and it's still 63% if you look at that or if you look over here. So it doesn't matter which points I pick. E could be in the fourth quadrant, or sorry, third quadrant. Who knows? But, uh, and you can watch the coordinates change down here, like E and C. They can, whoops, they can change quite a bit, and the slope is still the same. It's all, not until I start changing the, the angle that it sits at, that slope starts to get crazy. So here, uh, all these all these uh, angles that are going this way, see if they're sort of going uphill from left to right, you notice the slope here, or the slope here. This number is always positive if it's going uphill as I go left to right. Left to right, if it's going uphill, uphill left to right is a positive slope. Because, uh, the rise is positive, the run is positive, positive divided by positive is going to be positive. So I've got this positive slope in here. Now, when it's almost horizontal, that number gets very small. It's not rising very much, but it is still running a lot. I can move E and C around. Now you can actually see the, the rise lower. It's a very tiny rise for this huge run. So I get this really small. I got a small CD and a big ED, so there's a small fraction. So I get a small slope. Uh, but it's still positive. I'll, I'll move it to negative in a second. Uh, here's the other extreme sort of value. I have a very small run, but a very large rise, so I start to get really big values. This is just like tangent. This is why we're doing it sort of in the same way. Here the tangent would be 1, or the slope would be 1, if it's... Let's see if I can do it exactly, yeah. When this is the same as this, if those two things are equal, then of course the fraction is going to be 1. Okay, so what happens when I go downhill? Okay, now things are starting to get a little bit crazy. Going downhill now, uh, I'm going to have a negative slope. The rise you can think of, most people think of this as, I've, as I'm going from point C to point E, the rise is, is negative. It's like I'm falling from C to D. And D to E is still a positive run. So when I take a negative divided by a positive, that's going to give me a negative value of slope. Uh, these values over here that I have sketchpad computing, they're just computing geometric lengths. So they're not going to tell me if the slope is positive or negative. That's just going to give me the absolute value of that ratio. The actual slope is is what you should you should uh, watch is over here. I believe to be the slope. So over here, when I've got when I've got lines that are now going downhill left to right, as I go 
left to right down. If I was driving, but it's in this direction, if I was driving uh, sort of easterly on this uh, graph, if I'm going downhill, then that's going to be a negative slope. So all these kind of slopes are negative. The way I set this up, I've always got this line pinned here at 0, 0. It doesn't have to be. Um, any line that's going downhill left to right, even if it were up here or down here, if it were going downhill left to right, it would have a negative slope. So here, of course, is a very small negative slope. This is negative 0 0.06, 0 0.05 now. And way up here, I have very big negative numbers, like negative 36. It's almost vertical. I have a very tiny, I had a very tiny run, but a very huge rise. Hugely negative. So I get a big negative slope. Okay, so that about covers, um, that about covers slope. Of course, it doesn't matter. Again, I'm going to have a negative slope if I move these around. Notice all these right triangles I do, I make when I'm doing this, they're all similar. That triangle is similar to this one. And so rise divided by run is always going to be the same, even if the triangle is a lot bigger. Okay, so uh, if that line is going uphill, we have a positive slope. Downhill, we have a negative slope. Um, what's not uphill or downhill? Well, horizontal is not uphill or downhill. Actually, I can do this cool thing. I can, whoa, I can make this stick to the axis. Watch this. Uh, sometimes it lets me do this. Yeah, okay, it's going to let me snap it to the axis. That's great. Watch what happens to the slope. The slope is now zero. The rise from C to D is zero. C and D are pinned to each other. There's no rise, there's no vertical change between E and C. So, um, you know that, um, that rise we just saw a second ago see if I can undo this here. Yeah, this rise from C to D, it is now it's snapped completely down to zero. There is absolutely no rise from C to D. I'm just doing this by hand now, so yeah, it's a little bit positive here. But um, yeah, the rise from C from E, between E and C, there's no vertical change. If I can actually get that to be zero. Uh, there's no vertical change between C and D. There's not supposed to be any. Uh, but there's all kinds of run. I can move E all over the place, and E might be some huge number. So CD, which is not really no distance at all, 0, divided by whatever distance you want to call it. It could be anything along this horizontal line. That's always going to be 0. 0 divided by anything is going to be 0. So a horizontal line has slope 0, which makes sense because we were having positive numbers of slope here. They were getting smaller, positive, smaller, positive, smaller, positive. And then down here, I have a downhill slope. So this is going to be a negative slope. If you watch the slope here, it's negative. But it's getting closer to 0, closer to 0, closer to 0, 0. And then positive, 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 positive. So that's kind of, that kind of makes sense. Uh, horizontal line, slope zero. The other one that's not uphill or downhill really would be this. Um, and what if you get a completely vertical line? Well, it's completely vertical. It's, it's close to vertical now. But I'm just going to do this so you can see. Um, close to vertical, ED is going to start to get really small. CD could be anything, especially if it's way down here. But ED might get really small. In fact, in fact, right at vertical, ED goes to zero. There is no run to this line anymore. So when I'm talking about rise over run, rise, again, could be anything. The distance from C to E vertically, or C to D, actually, here. Um, this vertical change between any two points could be anything. But the lower number here, the denominator, could be zero. So when I have an actual denominator of zero, let's see if I can get that to snap on there. Look, the slope says here that it's undefined. There is no slope here because you can't take a big number and divide it by zero. You can't divide by zero. That's crazy talk. Now, notice here on Skipster, when it takes these two numbers and divides them, it gets some huge number. This is 1.81 times 10 to the 15th. That's just because Sketchpad is doing some rounding here, and I don't think it actually thinks this is zero. It probably thinks this is 0 0.0000000 something. And when it divides these, it actually does get a number, but it's some huge number. Anyway, you should believe this. Notice up here it says the slope from A to B is actually undefined. There is no slope for a vertical line. If it's truly vertical, there is no there is no run. The, the run will be zero, and anything divided by zero is not possible. So to recap, we have positives going uphill, negatives are going downhill, slope of zero if it's horizontal, and no slope if it's vertical. The kind of problems you're going to get in this section are going to be things like, okay, find the slope, and they'll probably they'll just probably give you two points and say, okay, what's the slope? Um, I don't know. Let's do one over here and over here. This looks like it might be something like 5, 4, and this one could be over here at negative 2, 1.
let's just say those are the points and you're asked okay what is the slope what is that measure of steepness between these two points well uh, I would suggest before you get all bent out of shape about a formula remember this is always part of a right triangle you did this exact same thing when you had to do distance formula and it's really not that bad to try to figure out well what is this vertical length and what is this horizontal length? And you have to find those exact same lengths if you're going to be talking about distance anyway. So you might as well get used to it. Okay. Um, so this vertical length from the y coordinate, now this is saying we have a height here of 4. That's what y coordinates are. So that's a y coordinate of 4. This is a y coordinate of 1 at this level. So from a height of 4 to a height of 1, this has a distance of 3. This point, now let's talk about the, um, the vertical change. Or sorry, the horizontal length, this, this sort of run number. This one has a position number address of 5. And the x coordinate over here, this little position, is at negative 2. So the distance from here to here, the, the horizontal spread along you know, this, this, uh, this segment, the east-west measure here, is 7. So my rise... over run is like saying rise over run which is well three seventh I really can't I really can't do much with that other than put it in the calculator and get a decimal yeah and so any two points along this line if I divide their rise by their run should turn out to be three sevenths if I want to take this one step further and say okay well smarty pants now that you've had all this trig what is the angle here what is the angle of this line with you know, in this triangle, or what is the angle at the x-axis, because notice that would be the same, because these are parallel. I drew a little horizontal line here. Of course, the x-axis is horizontal, and these lines are just, uh, sorry, these angles are just uh, corresponding angles with those parallels. Uh, I could say, you know, what is that angle? What is this angle? Uh, let's call it, let's call it theta for now, because, you know, we like, we like our Greek letters. So if that angle is theta, what's the measure of angle theta? Well, I know that the slope here is 3 over 7. I know that the rise over run is 3 seconds. I know that the opposite side in that triangle, the opposite side is 3 when the, when the adjacent side is 7. We called that tangent yesterday. I know that the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So if I really cared to find the angle, I would know. All I need to do is find the inverse tangent of 3 sevenths, and it will give me that that degree. And let's do that on the calculator. The inverse tangent of, and I don't have to even worry about the decimal, I'll just say 3 sevenths is 23.2 degrees. There we go. 23.2 degrees. And that's how you convert from coordinates to degrees. We've never been able to do that before. Congratulations.